Okay, welcome. We are at a, another episode of the Not Pop Show here at Pop Geek Heaven. And I pulled a few things off the shelves here that I wanted to talk about. I usually do two at a time, and that is the case here. We are going to deal with two things. We are going to talk about the new Foo Fighters uh, album, Wasting Light. And then I'm going to talk about a favorite guitar player of mine since the mid-70s, uh, Rory Gallagher. There's a whole bunch of activity going on with Rory, uh, who died uh, back in the 90s, uh, because his brother has been doing a great job just dealing with the, the archives and really lovingly uh, bringing everything into reissue over the last decade. But there's uh, sort of a renewed push with everything being upgraded, a lot of new stuff uh, coming out that's been found in the uh, bur buried away in the archives and then also new repackaging of the reissues and one of those I wanted to talk to you about because it's a heck of a buy that you can find and I'll include a link below here as well for this it's a five CD uh, box set that you can get for pretty much a song of a bunch of Rory's records from the mid late 70s and early 80s uh, so let's actually talk about Rory first um, it's a weird kind of set here. The five albums are right here in order. They are Deuce, we got Calling Card, and I have to, sorry, I have to look at this, Top Priority. These are in the order of release, Jinx, and then Fresh Evidence. This is not the most vital Rory Gallagher, and I don't necessarily recommend this as a beginning point, but at this price, yeah, maybe. It's a nice place to begin, but it's not the most vital stuff. The, the, my favorite record uh, of his is Photo Finish, and a lot of people like Live in Europe as well, um, and also Deuce and his self-titled debut records. I think those are actually better records than almost everything here, except maybe Deuce. Um, still, I want to highlight uh, this, this collection because there's a lot of really, really good stuff that's going on. On these records. Rory never quite released a record that was kick-ass perfect from beginning to end. It's always a little spotty for my ears and I think a lot of American sensibilities um, would find the similar sort of assessment of a lot of his catalog even in the 70s. Um, however, Rory was greatly and rightfully revered and worshipped in continental Europe and also in um, in Ireland, of course, which is where he's from, and uh, in the United Kingdom. He put on blistering live shows, and there's all kinds of DVD material that's out there from Rory that uh, is readily available and extremely highly recommended. Uh, you can see this guy work the fretboard like few could. He was something special. Uh, there was no doubt about that, and that is captured best in a live context with him. He, what, the, the studio never was quite... Uh, a comfortable environment for him, and you can hear that on almost all of his recorded output. Nonetheless, there's no question that uh, he was able to capture a lot of the magic of his talents and the, the energy and the dynamics of his live bands. He had very different uh, people that came in the mix, but his bass player was always pretty much a constant uh, throughout, the, throughout the years. Um, but uh, anyway, Rory is a, a real special person in the history of rock and roll, and I just wanted to sort of lift him up. This particular collection just came out a few months ago. There's a new uh, collection that came out of an unreleased album of his that's been highly touted in Rory circles. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention that below. I was less enamored uh, with that. I can see why Rory wanted to shelve that record because he ended up with a far superior one. Um, when it was released, I really want to point you towards Photo Finish. I think some of his strongest material um, is on there, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a just great production job that is done on that. Now, let's move on to the Foo Fighters here on Not Pop. The Foo Fighters, a band that uh, syncophontically, if that is a word, um, everybody touts as being absolutely awesome. And I am a Foo Fighters fan and have been since the first record. I have everything that the Foos have released uh, and on their formal studio releases. And this record came out at a really budget price. You can find it for $10 new on Amazon and other online retailers and probably your local record store. If you actually have one left, because there's not too many of them. Um, 
And Wasting Light, everybody said, just another kick-ass, two thumbs up, and uh, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, A minus, 4 out of 5 star record. Um, the story behind here is that they went back with the band and they built a studio in, uh, uh, in, in, in the garage, David Grohl's garage, and they were going to record this analog, which they did, uh, and it was going to be a real organic sounding record. And... I don't get it. It sounds digitally recorded to me. It sounds very stilted, very stiff. Um, the songs aren't particularly inspired. It's a good Foo, Foo record, no question about it. I don't think Dave Grohl can make anything bad. Um, the energy's there, um, but it, it just sounds kind of dialed in and uninspired to me. And I think I might be the only person I've encountered that feels that way. Um, and uh, why I want to talk about it here, I don't know why. I, it's not to be a contrarian, um, because everything in their catalog is pretty, pretty darn very good to jaw-droppingly awesome. Uh, this one, however, uh, definitely leaves me a bit cold and uh, perplexed. I don't hear it. It sounds over. It sounds clinical. I don't hear the loose band vibe going on here at all. I, I feel it a really forced kind of of uh let's have fun maybe kind of uh, kind of environment but uh, there's no question that if you are a Foo Fighters fan you do want it there's plenty of really good songs that are on this record um, that are going to uh be of interest to even the most cynical uh, Foo Fighters fan of which I don't really consider myself one being but this one I just wanted to sort of say it like it is because I've listened to it three times now and it's just sort of hitting me uh, the same way, and I'm probably just going to lift a few tracks off and archive onto one of my hard drives and be probably done with this record, is my guess. Um, but nonetheless, I did want to talk about that with you. Share your opinion of this record below. Uh, feel free to strongly disagree with me and share any Rory stories, especially you Europeans, that you have with seeing him live. I never saw him live. I had my chances growing up in Boston in the late 70s, but limited funds, so there was always so many shows that I was always going to, and there was only so much money uh, that I could spend on concerts. Um, and alas, I never did see him live. Anyway, that's it for this show and episode of Not Pop, and we will talk to you in a few more days.